think it's time to get started for this second session this morning. My name is Carl Johan Engström and I will moderate this session. And uh, we will go further on from some of you who took part of the session this morning here, going further into the marriage between uh, transport technologies, PRTs and uh, urban development. I think this is a very key question because uh, many of the hindrances are, are at least from decision makers point of view uh, a hard way to convince them that we could uh, really integrate the new system into the urban fabric as it is and uh, to uh, take uh, part of all the assets that are there already and I think that means that we have to be much more innovative uh, uh, thinking about PRTs than uh, only, uh, that's not only but only in that way resolving the technical problems with it. So I will call for Eva Kulper to so start this session giving her reflections on, on the PRT as part of the urban planning and urban design. Eva is an architect and working in Bjerking, a, a consultant firm, not only with these questions, but them too, I think. So please, the floor is yours. Um, in my everyday life, I, I design houses, mainly. But I have uh, participated in a few feasibility studies. And for some 10 years now, I have been able to then uh, ask myself what, it is, what is it going to look like and, uh, and how is it going to affect uh, the city life, mainly. Uh, I think uh, <coughs> people often ask, what, was it, what is it going to look like? It's going to look terrible, my architect fellow says it's, it's impossible. But then I ask myself, well, what, what is it, the alternative? What do we have today? Uh, so therefore, I have to start with looking at the traffic environment that we are used to today. We have kind of partly accepted it, at least. And uh, then we look at some of the negative effects from podcasts and how to handle them. And uh, I'll end up with a few visions of the urban life and how could it change using podcasts. So this is what we've got and what we s seem to be so proud of. Um, I don't think it's acceptable. And uh, thinking about it, even the rain actually is an effect of the car traffic. In Sweden at least, they say it's going to rain more because of the climate change. Um, you don't have to look very far away. We're sitting in this house, uh, waterfront, and right in front of us we have this terrible street mess in uh, one of the most beautiful spots. It could be one of the most beautiful spots of Stockholm. So the effects from car traffic are giant. We always start by um, figuring out how are we going to get the cars next to this new building or into the building even. We have, uh, we have this uh, um, measures and um, the measures form then the buildings, the environment. Uh, the cities of today are completely a product of the car measurements and they're not always so good for the needs of human beings we are not made for that environment for example in the small scale um, you cannot recognize a person on too far a distance and the car usually gives too far a distance uh, you cannot recognize the mood of people it affects life very much. 
These are environments that we all love, not only because of the sun. It's car free, you have at least half of the island car free. And the measurements are very nice to meet people. And it's not so noisy, no emissions. The old town of Stockholm is the same thing. Narrow me measurements made for man. And the large scale too, it affects the city very much. Here you can see uh, how much space different kinds of traffic systems take. Uh, the foot, by foot you take up um, not even one square meter. I don't know how they have counted this. It would be very interesting to have someone look at cord cars in this uh, comparison. I think we would be somewhere um, in the uh, range of, of the bicycle. Somewhere there we would end up with the podcast, is my guess. And the car is uh, just terrible, consumer of land. You can see that in the bottom. Uh, some American cities have uh, two thirds of the land occupied with traffic systems. In Sweden it's usually around 50% maybe. It's a, but it's a negative spiral, the bigger the city gets, the more of the land has to be used for car traffic. So, uh, uh, the more cars you need, the more roads you need, and the distances get bigger, and then you need even more cars. And therefore it's, it's impossible. You cannot solve big cities with cars. It, it's, you cannot, it's an equation that can't be solved. And this you all know that is uh, emissions and noise also affects the city, the urban space very much. Uh, also buses have these negative effects. In the Plans Vespe they have problems in the main street where uh, the buses always are, almost are congested in, in the morning traffic. And people who live nearby are not so happy. And it's not it's not a nice urban uh, environment to sit in and to be in. And then of course, this. A lot of people die, get hurt. And we have accepted that too, maybe. Uh, I think it's unacceptable too, since there is an, alter an alternative. And especially for children, it's not only the ones that get hurt that are the problem. It's all, it affects all of us because the, the children and their parents are very worried. And the children can't go out anymore. You can't. They cannot go to the school on their own. They cannot go out in the afternoon to meet their friends. They have to be driven everywhere. You can't go outside of the, of the door because there is a deadly it's terrible. How can we accept that? The freedom of the children is very small on the, on the cost of the freedom of the, the car owner. Um, and here you have also a picture of uh, Ekerö Centrum, car free. The car is on the other side of the, of the building that you park it there. But this is a centre made of uh, Ralph Erskine. Ralph Erskine was uh, very good at uh, creating spaces for human interaction. Um, it is uh, the measurements, the distances between the houses, uh, and also the different kinds of... Uh, uh, you have the commercial and you have people living on top, all kinds of different um, actions at the same spot. Um, the tram, many people like to introduce the tram again, and to me it seems uh, um, almost criminal actually. How can you mix a heavy vehicle that you cannot even steer with all these unprotected people? Of course you have accidents, but it seems you must accept them. It's, I think it's un unacceptable. Uh, and also, if you want to mix it with bicycles, it's not so good having those 
uh, guideways because you get stuck in, in them with the bicycle and you trip and fall over. And the bicycle city, I think, is something that comes. I think uh, it's almost as good as a podcast city. Or maybe you can mix them. Because the bicycle is uh, no emissions, it's healthy, it's not noisy, and it doesn't take much space. So you can have a nice urban uh, space where you can sit at the cafe and talk to your friends. Um, often you build uh, bicycle pathways next to the road because people feel safer when when you can uh, when they can be seen. So you have a double safety with podcasts because you can still have the bicycle pathway next to the podcast road, but you don't have to risk um, an accident. And here is the Plans Lesby where we are suggesting uh, building uh, the new podcast guideway in combination with the pathway for bicycles that they have planned anyway. It would probably quite in, be quite economic and it's also very good to build them together because uh, of the safety aspects. So, I think the combination is perfect. It makes a small footprint quite healthy and safe. But this was what people don't like about it. Is it ugly? Well, what is ugly? All kind of technical devices, new things, you can see them, mostly. It's mainly a matter of how you treat the problem. You could have a podcast on top of this. I don't know what people thought 2,000 years ago about this, but today we think it's quite nice, I think. We wouldn't tear it down, at least. Uh, in Bath, which is um, uh, World Heritage, because of its architecture, they made an architectural uh, competition a few years ago, won by Arup, with this, uh, I think, very nice solution where they combine the beam with uh, the fence. And uh, I think it fits in very well in this environment. You can see it, but it's okay. You can uh, bridge over barriers like water too. The idea is not new. So now we're coming to the size of things. This is a train. It's kind of difficult to accept. And of course, the size of the, the, the beam and uh, the vehicles is very important. Therefore, this is one of my favorites. The smaller the vehicles, the smaller the beam, the more easily it fits into the environment, of course. But then again, you have to think about what is more the most practical uh, in every aspect. I'm just talking about the design, city design. Um, suspended or supported, I think that uh, suspended is probably a little more difficult to fit into to, uh, urban environments because the pillars will be longer, although the beam will be higher up, but uh, you also have, um, it is easier, I think, with a straight pillar under the supported uh, uh, solution, you can have a straight pillar. They will be more, um, take more of the, your, um, um, shit. <laughs> it's so difficult with this English. <laughs> um, and then, of course, like always, we have to work with uh, cleaning up and coordinating different things. So you can co coordinate the pillars with uh, lamps and, and uh, advertisement. Or you can make a um, bicycle rack, or you can make a bench. So there's a lot you can do in this aspect. 
of course. It's important that you can can uh, have different solutions in different environments. I think this one is quite nice in this environment. It would be terrible in the old town. And therefore it's important to have uh, this possibility to have the pillars and the beams designed by architects and the rest is the technique. This one I think is a nice example of how uh, uh, it's a nice slim beam. Uh, it fits well with the building. I think the building is uh, new but it's also adapt well adapted to the city. Uh, this one is slightly more difficult to digest, I think. It's a narrow street. Narrow streets are more difficult. Maybe if you have to take it through a narrow street, you should consider whether you should make it car-free. Then you could plant some trees and make it nice that way. And you could also have the pillars in the middle, away from the facades. Or you have to maybe add something to the buildings to make it go better with with uh, the environment. The buildings and the guideway have to go together. You have to work it together. Um, also, the curved guideway is often very difficult. It's, it seems um, you don't know the reason why, why all of a sudden you have to have a curve. Of course, you want to change the track, but uh, in the Plans Vest, we try to make them a round house where you could attach the guideway to and the, it also has a function of a, of a station then. If you want to go off, you go all the way around and stop on the other side and then you come back on the guideway. And with a bigger radius then you could also fit a restaurant and a small shop if you want. Um, I think the neighborhood stations are very important because they will be the new meeting points. You have to think very carefully about how to place them. And there should be room for parking bicycles or small carriages. Because here, I think, is where you pick up your, uh, your goods, your groceries that you have ordered. And also, you leave your garbage in the morning. So maybe you have to have a small carriage or something like that. And the best, would, the ideal is, of course, if you can have some kind of cafe or a fish shop room next to it where there often are people because also again of the safety aspect you want to be seen. Um, you can have the stations integrated with uh, the buildings. You can have them go through the building even but then of course you have to manage the problem of the barrier, in, barrier inside the building but sometimes that can be managed. Um, you have an example of a hotel here. Uh, this was a picture made for another conference where we wanted to show the podcast. If we wouldn't have wanted to show the podcast, we could have put them a little further back on the roof and we wouldn't have seen them. So that would probably have been a better solution, but then we couldn't show the podcast. <laughs> On the roof is uh, one of my favorites. This is also a plant's lesbian. And uh, the center hall uh, mall has uh, exactly the right height to have a podcast station on top of it. And then you can use the infrastructure of the house, the infrastructure that's already there. So it's probably quite a cheap concept. Um, this is... Uh, La Rambla in Spain, very famous street. <laughs> and there are a lot of nice roofs here, so I just couldn't resist it. I had to place a little pod car guideway there. It looks like that. Um, yes, it's getting more and more crowded in our cities. The space is scarce, and should we then? use it for the children or should we do the other way around? I think we should have the children on the ground floor and the podcast on the traffic on the roofs where you can't see it. And the same goes for the green. I mean, you want to have the gardens on the roof. It's kind of upside down. 
Um, there are some problems that are difficult. I think low housing, low houses, one family houses, I can't really imagine how, our, how we can do this in a good way. At least not in existing areas. If you build it new, yes, you can have it on the roof. But then this is one of the planning conditions and the conditions that people know when they buy the houses. And it can, can be really good, but in existing areas I think it's difficult. So avoid that. Don't take them through one family house areas. Another problem that I see is that um, our little reptile brain is going to be stressed. Probably, even though we know that they are not dangerous because our reptile brain is going to register that something is moving above our head. Uh, and together with all the other dangers that we have on the ground floor, that's, that could be not so nice. So, uh, I would suggest that we try then to make car-free areas as much as possible, like we did here in, here in Flemings Bay 10 years ago. Uh, you see all the big uh, roads and car, car park places. And uh, with this little port car highway on top of the roofs here, we could just eliminate many of the roads. Some of them are under uh, under the deck, but uh, we could then make a nice park with uh, ponds instead. Six kilometers of uh, guideway for port cars. Um, and so we're now coming into the visionary part of it, which probably will take a long time, maybe 20, 50 years, until we are then uh, cars have reduced and uh, we have maybe mostly port cars. And this is a vision that some, some young people had for Skanska a few years ago. How did they like the future city? And uh, I think many of us would like to have it like this, where we can stroll around, have some more cultural acti activities, uh, maybe some more commercial activities too. Sit and talk and have a coffee. And here's another vision, also with only podcasts, and the ground level is free for bicycles and pedestrians. And you have all kinds of different port cars uh, delivering goods and people. And uh, this actually is the office where I sit today too. <laughs> it's one of, uh, one of the most crowded street corners in, in Stockholm today. Very busy, very many cars. Emissions, noise, everything you want. And we had a, we made it fast vision. What could it look like? What are we going to do with us, all this land if this comes true? That we could have podcasts instead of cars. I mean, it's, it's swindling. What are we going to do? 50% of the land area. We can build other houses, of course, but we can also use it for, for leisure or nice things. Green trees. It is far ahead in time, but uh, these things do take a long time. And if we build roads today, that's what our children is going to, are going to live with.